Hello, my name is Clancy and welcome to the Iron Bars, my true crime YouTube channel. So guys, before I go any further, I just want to say thank you to everybody that is liking all my videos and also for liking this video. So with that said, let's get into today's case and it is the case of Daisy DeMalcolm, South Africa's first female serial killer. So when I was researching this case, I found two birth dates for Daisy. One says she was born on the 1st of June, 1886, and the other one says she was born on the 1st of July, 1886. So we know that she was born in 1886, but the dates are kind of like very sketchy. No one knows exactly when it's the 1st of June or the 1st of July. I am choosing that she was born on the 1st of June, 1886, making her a Gemini. Daisy was born in Seven Fountain, Grahamstown in the Eastern Cape, South Africa. She was one of 11 children to William Stringfellow and Fanny Augusta Matilda Hancon Smith. So when Daisy was about eight years old, her father and two brothers decided to pack up and go to Zimbabwe. Back then it was called Rhodesia, where they were promised a piece of land that they can start farming on. So there were a number of reasons why Daisy's father decided it was a good idea that they pack up and relocate to Zimbabwe and start farming there. So one of the main reasons why they moved to Zimbabwe was because it was going to become cheaper living in Zimbabwe versus living in South Africa, where they practically had almost nothing. Now, let me take you down memory lane or some piece of South African history in the late 1800s into the early 1900s. So in 1880 to about 1888 or 89, there were two civil wars that took place. Basically, it was the two colonizers of South Africa, which was Britain as well as the Netherlands. So there was a part in South Africa where the Netherlands descendant had settled on and that land that they had settled on, it held mineral resources such as gold and diamonds. So when Britain found out that there was gold and diamonds, on the land that the Afrikaners had claimed as their own, then there was some sort of a fight between them. Basically, the British wanted to bully the Afrikaners out of that land with mineral resources and there was a civil war between them. And that civil war was called the Anglo-Boer War. The first Anglo-Boer War was won by the Afrikaners when they managed to push, when they managed to push out the Brits. So about a few years later, the Brits did not give up because they also wanted to benefit out of the gold rush and the diamond rush that was happening at the time in South Africa. And as a result, the Boers as well as the English, then they began a second civil war, which was called the South African War II, the second Anglo-Boer War, where the Brits this time around, they did win. So many Afrikaners were mistreated by the Brits. Some were even played in concentration camps and ill-treated basically inhumanely and some decided to flee to Zimbabwe some fled to Mozambique some fled to Namibia back then it was called Southwest Africa some fled to Botswana basically in the southern so when Daisy was about 10 years old she and the rest of her siblings then packed up and followed their father unfortunately on this 2000 kilometer trip from the eastern cape to Zimbabwe they did not have their mother with them simply because they had told the father that the moment that he had left them in South Africa, their mother decided to abandon them. As a matter of fact, she decided to marry a whole new man and abandoned her children. Unfortunately, about a few months after marrying this man, their mother passed away. So when Daisy was about 13 or 14 years old, her father then decided to take her back to South Africa to a boarding school in Cape Town. Now, back in the day, apparently a girl child was not particularly allowed to go to high school all the way and graduate high school. By the time she turns about 16 or 17 years old, she was allowed to leave school. Now, when she left school, it's either she became a housewife, if she did not become a housewife, she needed to go to do some sort of training in hospital, either becoming a nurse or a teacher or something along those lines. So Daisy then did go to Cape Town and did boarding school. By the time she turned 17, she decided to drop out because 
it had reached that age where a girl child can drop out of school and basically go and do whatever it is that she wanted. Most of the time, they became housewives. However, with Daisy, she decided after she had dropped out of high school, she went to Durban where she started training to become a nurse. Not long when she arrived in Durban, that is when she met a man by the name of Bert Fuller, who was a little bit older than her. Bert Fuller and Daisy fell madly in love with each other. People that knew her said these two were like two peas in a pod. You could not separate them. That is how much in love they were. Bert Fuller worked for the government while Daisy was at the nursing school in Durban. So about a few months after meeting and he dropped on his one knee and proposed marriage and Daisy said yes. Sadly, Daisy and Bert would not walk the aisle because out of the blue, Bert started feeling sick. Now, with Daisy being a nurse in training, she made sure that she took care of Fuller, making sure that he was well treated, he was comfortable, as well as he was taking his medication and making sure that he was resting. Unfortunately, Bert did succumb to his illness and he passed away. Daisy was devastated at the loss of the love of her life. So at the death of Bert Fuller, that is when people started making speculations and coming up with different theories that he was bitten by a malaria carrying mosquito. That is why he passed away. Other people were like, no, but he was vaccinated for malaria. How is it possible that he died from malaria when he was vaccinated? Some people theorized that he must have died from autoimmune disease, basically meaning that even though he was immunized for malaria, it's possible that he was bitten by a malaria carrying mosquito and then the vaccination basically turned against him and killed him instead of defending him from the malaria. Now, I am no doctor, no medical expert or anything of that nature. I'm not even sure if something like that does happen, but apparently it does. So please don't quote me on it. Do do your research and find out what exactly is autoimmune disease and how that happens, etc. and so on. Especially during this time, we need to know these sort of things. So it turns out that immediately after Fuller had proposed to Daisy, he had gone and took out a life insurance on him and made Daisy the sole beneficiary for his life insurance. So as a result, upon his death, Daisy had received a hundred pounds. So let me take you once again on a short South African history. So back then in the 1800s, I think South Africa was colonized in 1652 by Jan van Riebeck, who came from the Netherlands. He's the one that is said to have discovered South Africa. And so they've been in the country for a while. And then as a result, they built a whole language called Afrikaans and they built a whole new culture which was mixed with all kinds of cultures from Asia as well as Africa as well as Europe. I think the British came to South Africa in 1800. When they came to South Africa they had heard rumors that gold and diamond was discovered in Johannesburg. They came and colonized both the Afrikaners as well as the entire South Africa and they came with them the British pound. Now, back in the day, they used to use the British pound as the South African currency. So that is why Daisy was paid out in pounds versus being paid in rands. Now, the rand only came into the fore after 1910. When South Africa gained its independence from Britain, basically from the Queen, I think at that time it was Queen Victoria. But anyways, um, that is what I wanted to bring to your attention, that back then we used to use the pound. Even to this day, the older, older, older generation around 88 into the 90s, whenever they talk about a South African currency, they don't use the rand. Uh, particularly if it's like one rand or two rand, they still call it a pound. Basically, they say pondo. For example, one rand, they will call it e pondo. Two rand, they will call it two pondo. Things of that meaning two pounds. So they are still having that mentality because they grew up during that time when the British 
were still in charge of South Africa. So now a hundred pounds is equivalent to about a hundred thousand to a hundred and fifty thousand in today's money. So back then a hundred pounds was a lot of money and Daisy had received that as Bud Fuller's life insurance payout. So after the death of Bud Fuller and Daisy had graduated from nursing school in Durban, she then decided to pack up her bags and head to Johannesburg. And so she thought she was going to start on a clean slate and be a single woman and nurse the loss of the love of her life. But immediately she landed in Johannesburg, that is when she met a man and this gentleman's name was William Cowell. He was a plumber and he was about 14 years older than Daisy. So it turns out that William Cowell was a very wealthy plumber in Johannesburg. Understandably so because back then Johannesburg was abuzz with all sorts of economic activities. Remember. Gold had been recently discovered, diamonds had been recently discovered, and as a result, they were building the city of Johannesburg. Skyscrapers were being erected, houses like suburbs, and all these buildings needed to be piped and plumbered. And as a result of that, William used to get all these big contracts to either pipe buildings or to do some plumbing in some other buildings and he would get like these multi-million rand or multi-million pound contracts back then. As a result of that, he became a multi-millionaire. So he was one of the wealthiest people in Johannesburg at the time. So Johannesburg, also known as City of Gold, it was flourishing, booming basically, and Daisy couldn't have been happier. So about a few months after meeting William, William also went on his one knee and proposed marriage. And guess what? Daisy said yes. So in the marriage, Daisy and William were extremely happy. They were almost like the it couple. They, were get, they would get invited to these big wealthy people's parties and country clubs and things of that nature. She was basically living a life of a princess. So the marriage to William produced about five children. Unfortunately, Daisy and William lost four of their children to infant mortality. Two of those children were a set of twins. So in 1911, right after the death of the twin boys, Daisy fell pregnant and gave birth to a baby boy and named him Rhodes Cecil. Now, Rhodes Cecil, why does that name sound familiar? But it is twisted. Oh, Cecil John Rhodes. I think he was like the Prime Minister of Zimbabwe or Rhodesia back then. Of course, Daisy was terrified for Rhodes because she feared that he too might get taken away from her due to infant mortality. However, after the birth of Rhodes Cecil, Daisy fell pregnant once again to another baby boy and named him Lester. Unfortunately, Lester will not see his fourth birthday because he too passed away. The neighbors were quite surprised at the death of Lester because the last time that they saw him, he looked very healthy. He was a bouncing baby boy who was running around a happy child that did not seem to have any health issues. However, Daisy explained him away and said he had a terminal illness that was incurable. That is what took him. So neighbors, friends, and family members of Daisy all came around and rallied behind her because she was looking extremely devastated to a point where she even started looking depressed. Of course, I can imagine losing four out of five of your children to infant mortality, definitely it will take a toll on any woman or any parent for that matter, because at the end of the day, this is somebody that they loved. And so to lose four, I, I can just imagine the devastation that Daisy must have gone through. So once again, Daisy fell pregnant to another baby boy by the name of Alfred. Unfortunately, Alfred too died from infant mortality. At this point in time, I'm like, oh my goodness, this poor woman, my goodness. I totally get it. Back then in the 1800s, early 1900s, 
medicine was still basically being developed and things like that where they would be able to prevent infant mortality because these days it's almost non-existent in many parts of the world but back then it was quite prevalent so daisy was no different from any other woman that was losing their children from infant mortality which is just wow for alfred he only lived 15 months and neighbors once again they could not believe what they were seeing because all they remember was that alfred was a healthy baby he too didn't seem to be ill from anything so now that he had passed on they were flabbergasted so after the death of four of their children they all then decided to pack up from johannesburg the city of johannesburg and head east of johannesburg in a small town called germiston where they decided to settle down there, hoping that their luck would be different. But when they got there, Daisy was exhausted. She could not have any more children because uh, William, I'm supposing, he wanted to try again and have another child because they only have this one by the name of Rhodes who has survived the, uh, the infant mortality. So he probably wanted another child. Unfortunately, Daisy at this point in time, her body was just exhausted from falling pregnant and giving birth. And then it turns out these babies, they end up dying anyway. So it was a discussion that came to an end and they never had another child. So in Germiston, William and Daisy, as well as Rhodes, they lived a happy lifestyle because after all, William was a very wealthy man and made sure that they had the best things in life. So remember that William is a plumber. So most of the time he works hard. Probably he goes and pipe buildings and he comes back home exhausted. So whenever he came home, what Daisy would do was would take like these these oils and basically massage him and he will and she will also give him some kind of like a herbal tea to relax his muscles and relax him while she massages him to make him feel better and relaxed every time when he returned from work this came naturally to daisy because she was after all a trained nurse so on the 11th of january 1923 William started making complaints to Daisy and telling her that the oils that he rub, that she rubs him with, they are making him feel ill. But Daisy was like, no, that is not, definitely not the oils that I'm using to massage you or anything that I'm giving you orally. All of these things are healthy for your body, for your bones, as well as your muscles, considering that you are working really hard and you are basically working with uh, buildings that are being built, probably the other dirt and other stuff that are going into your body, into your stream. And I want those things to be cleansed of you. That is when William was like, nah, these things that you are giving me, they are making me sick. There is no way I'm going to take any more of them. Excruciating pain. He would actually convulse as well as vomit. He would basically foam at the mouth. He was ill. And that is when Daisy decided to call the family doctor to come and examine him. When that family doctor arrived at the house, he found William basically in a fetal position with, uh, with, with foam coming out of his mouth and his face had turned blue. Daisy was out of her wits with worry. She had no idea what was happening with her husband. She wanted answers from the doctor and the doctor was like, wait a minute, I'm still examining him. Clearly, there's a lot that is going on. He had his suspicions, but he was not quite sure what it was. So he just needed to ensure that all the all the I's are dotted and all the T's are crossed before he could make a full diagnosis. So while the doctor was busy preparing and putting his tools together in order to treat, um, in order to treat William, that is when William took his last breath, he passed away. That second doctor looked at William and said, the symptoms that William is showing are symptoms of poisoning. But Daisy was like, poisoning? What are you talking about? My husband just fell ill. And uh, that's when Daisy was like, oh, maybe because he's a plumber, he must, have got po he must have got poisoned on his job and things of that nature. But the doctor looked at her and was like, 
I don't think so. So as a result of that, the second doctor refused to sign William's death certificate because of his suspicions. The doctor was adamant that William was poisoned and definitely not from work. So she wanted to inquire from the doctor what made him think that this was poison. And that is when the doctor said, shortness of breath, turning blue in the face, convulsions, vomiting, and all the other stuff that he was seeing that was happening to William before he died, all those were, all those were symptoms of poisoning. And that is when Daisy asked the doctor, what poison do you think it was that got him this ill that ended up killing him? And that is when the doctor said he suspects that it was strychnine. I don't know how to pronounce it. I will leave the name on the screen. Strychnine, I think that's how it's pronounced. And Daisy was like, what is that? I don't even know what poison is that. And the doctor still looked at her with side eye like, um, you know, girl. However, William's autopsy came and it said that William had died from chronic kidney failure as well as bleeding in the brain. And that was the end of it. So as per the life of the rich, all of William's estate and money went to Daisy, including his life insurance policy, where Daisy was the sole beneficiary. And this time around, Daisy became a multimillionaire. She was probably the first richest woman in Johannesburg, if not whole of South Africa. So for three years after William's death, Daisy decided, I'm just going to enjoy my life. I'm going to enjoy the money, the wealth and the status that she was getting out of the death of her husband's estate, as well as remaining single. So when the Rhodes became a teenager, Daisy then decided she needed to go back to the dating scene and probably find herself a nice squeeze and basically fall in love once again because she was missing being in love. And this is when she meets a gentleman by the name of Robert Sprout or Sprout. And what do you know, Robert Sprout was also a plumber and he was 10 years older than Daisy. It was not long after they have met, literally few months, when Robert and Daisy became married. And you know what the most insensitive thing that Daisy did? She married Robert on the death anniversary of William. People that knew Daisy and Robert said they were a happy couple. They were in love. They could not get their hands off each other. The only person that did not like Robert, it was Rhodes. Rhodes did not like Robert at all, and Robert did not like Rhodes at all. And that kind of like bothered Daisy, but she loved the man. And she was fully focused on the relationship with this man that she just recently married. So two years after the marriage, that is when Robert started getting ill. He just felt sick out of the blue. His symptoms were a spitting image of Williams. Robert's brother, after finding out that Robert was ill, and he ran to his brother's deathbed. When he got there, he could not believe his eyes, how ill his brother was. He almost looked dead. And that is when he started basically grieving the imminent death of his brother. And he wanted to know what on earth happened to his brother who was healthy and he was like fine and uh, the last time he has spoken to him so he doesn't understand what he was looking at and what caused it so while robert's brother was busy grieving the imminent death of his brother that is when daisy was nagging and basically asking this asking the brother to convince robert to sign her name in his life insurance policy as a sole beneficiary Looks like it worked. I'm not sure if uh, the brother was so devastated that he just wanted to get rid of this woman busy nagging him about the, the life insurance policy. That is when Robert actually signed the life insurance papers and made Daisy the sole beneficiary. Miraculously, Robert did also survive the illness and he recovered fully. But a few weeks after, Daisy poured him a glass of beer and after consuming the glass of beer, that is when Robert fell ill once again. And this time it was worse than ever, which basically he succumbed to that illness and died. Robert's brother was devastated. 
Daisy looked devastated herself. The neighbors were like, hang on a minute, what is going on? Uh, another death that Daisy has to go through? But the brother was like, there's no way, no way, no way. He could not believe his eyes that his brother that he left already had recovered, now dead. So he decided, okay, fine, after the burial of his brother, he went his way and Daisy went her own way. And Daisy basically, at this point in time, she was like, ah, I'm done with dating. I'm done with getting married because all these men that are married, they're ending up dead for reasons that I don't understand. And then Rhodes, at this point in time, he is growing up as well. And he's watching all these things that are taking place. So I'm thinking Rhodes was quite intelligent enough to start putting two and two together and start asking questions like, another one? Another one? But I'm not sure if he did after those, uh, those questions to his mother or he was asking himself, I don't know. But I know I would have went to my mom and said, hey, wait a minute, girl. Uh, first of all, I lost four of my siblings. Second of all, then there was Mr. William who also just died. Now is Robert? Come on, what's going on? At least that's what I would have done. And I'm sure any logical thinking person that is watching this video would probably have asked the same questions, especially when you are a teenager, because that age you are impressionable and you also very curious. So Robert's life insurance policy paid out £4,560, which is millions of rands in today's money. And of course, back in those days, it was also a lot of money. So Daisy took that and basically went and enjoyed it, spoiled herself, spoiled the roads, and made sure that she kept, she kept the status that she was a wealthy woman. So it was not long after Robert's death when Daisy met another plumber. Yes, he too was several years older than her. And this gentleman's name was Sidney Demelka. Also, literally months after meeting and falling in love, Daisy and Sidney Demelka basically went and got married. So Sidney was described as a very kind man. He was tolerable, understanding. He was also very gentle with Rhodes and made sure that Rhodes was happy. However, Rhodes did not play that game. He did not like Sidney at all. Even though he was a very nice guy, he still did not like him. And they were quite happy in the marriage as well. And at this point, like I mentioned earlier, Daisy was no longer interested in having children with any of the men that she was marrying. Okay, I think you know by now what you think started happening to Sydney, right? Convulsions, vomiting, excruciating pain, and other stuff that her previous husbands experienced to their death right? So Rose was about to turn 21 and he was excited to turn 21 because upon turning 21, he was going to inherit his father's estate and some monies that he had left for both him and his mother. And so he was just excited about that, even though he was doing odd jobs here and there, basically to take care of himself and his needs, not always depending on his mother. So he would, he would fix some cars here. He would do other odd jobs there, which some of the jobs included him traveling to the neighboring country of Swaziland uh, to and from Swaziland and South Africa and uh, he was just being a proud boy teaching himself the re being a responsible man and uh, being responsible also with his money that he is making however he had his eye on his father's estate as well as the money that was left to him so one day, building up to his 21st birthday, Daisy then decided to pack a Rhodes lunch and also made him a flux of coffee. And Rhodes was quite happy to see that his mother has made him a lunchbox and also made him his favorite drink, which was coffee. During lunchtime, Rhodes and a co, -co and a co-worker sat down to have lunch, and that is when he shared the coffee with the co-worker. Not 
Long after drinking the coffee, both the co-worker as well as Rhodes started feeling ill. So basically, they immediately started vomiting. And then after vomiting for a while, that is when they started feeling a little bit better. Rhodes went back home and basically relayed what had happened to him to his mother. And then the mother was like, what is going on, child? He was like, I don't know. I just fell ill together with my co-worker. So at this point in time, Rhodes did not suspect anything. So uh, the f about a few weeks down the line, guess what happened? Uh, Rhodes fell sick again so sick that he too would basically crumble into a fetal position and he would convulse, he would vomit, he would experience excruciating pain and all of the stuff that the previous husbands of her mother were experiencing, Rhodes was also experiencing. Unfortunately, Rhodes did succumb to his sickness and passed away. Daisy was distraught. The apple of her eye took his last breath. She could not take it anymore. She was devastated. So when Robert's brother found out that Rhodes had died in a similar circumstance as his brother, that is when Robert's brother, whose name was also William, was like, no ways. No ways, no ways, no ways. So it turns out that he had made a vow to himself after the death of, her, of his brother that he was going to keep a close eye on Daisy. That if ever she fell in love with another man and married him and then he passed away, then he will know that she is the one responsible for the death of his brother. And, and he will go and report her to the police and get her arrested. But it just happened that instead of a husband dying, it was Rhodes who died in similar circumstances as his brother. That is when he went to the police to report Daisy. When he got to the police, he basically drew them a picture of what this woman was doing. And the police basically were like, okay, this makes sense. They will look into it. And when they looked into it, that's when they went to the court and applied for exhumation of three bodies. So that is the body of Rhodes, the body of Robert, as well as the body of William. And indeed, they were granted the exhumation order and they exhumed the three bodies, as I've mentioned. So when they took the bodies to the lab for examination, the medical examiner looked at, looked at Rhodes' body and said, this body looks very clean. Basically, it had not decomposed. It was pristine and well kept. And that is when the medical examiner says, said, the only way that a body would look like that after several weeks or months of burial, it's because the body is filled with poison, arsenic. That's what he said. So he conducted a toxicology and indeed the toxicology revealed that Rhodes' system was filled with arsenic. And then they went and examined the bodies of William and Robert and they found strychnine. So that is when the medical examiner wrote a whole new autopsy report and handed it over to the police. So when the police looked at the autopsy of the three bodies, that is when they were convinced that indeed Daisy the milker was guilty or at least suspected to be the murderer of these three people, in, including her son. So when Rhodes' colleague heard about the autopsy report, he also went to the police and said, hey, at one point, me and Rhodes fell, suddenly fell ill and we started vomiting. The, he suspects that it's possible that his mother had tried to kill, kill him way earlier. And so the colleague was then called and a toxicology was also done on his on his blood and indeed it came positive of arsenic that is when everybody was convinced that daisy was the one responsible for the death of Rhodes. she was placed under arrest and she was charged with three counts of murder of Rhodes, robert as well as william daisy's trial started in 1932 and this is when daisy was registered as south africa's first 
female serial killer. So back in those days, it was unheard of that a woman had killed two of her husbands as well as her child. So everybody in the town came to court because they wanted to see this woman with their own eyes. They wanted to know what happened, why she did it, and what was going to happen to her. So they wanted to make sure that they don't miss out any gory details in court. So the interesting part about the trial, the court did not find enough evidence that it was indeed Daisy that had killed uh, her two husbands because there's no evidence that shows that she administered strychnine on them. But uh, when it came to Rhodes' case, a pharmacist did come forward and testified in court that she recognizes Daisy because she would come to his pharmacist and, and would purchase arsenic. And when he asked her what is the arsenic for, that is when she told the pharmacist that she's going to use it on a cat that is very ill. So she just wants uh, to uh, to put the cat down and uh, because it was in excruciating pain. So the pharmacist thought, okay, it was a good enough for reason and basically sold her the, uh, the arsenic. So the testimony of the pharmacist was the last nail to Daisy's coffin because as a result of that, the court was convinced that Daisy is guilty for the murder of Rhodes. Daisy Demelka was sentenced to death by hanging. On the 8th of December, 1932, Daisy Demelka was hanged. Daisy's husband, Sidney, the only husband that survived, he professed to her innocent for 20 years till the day he also took his last breath. He really believed that his wife was innocent and that the state had hanged an innocent woman. So this brings us to the end of the case of Daisy Demelka, South Africa's first female serial killer. So if you are not subscribed to my channel, do make sure that you subscribe and also click the bell notification so that you do not miss out on any of my true crime uploads. Please share this video far and wide and I highly appreciate you for liking this video as well as watching and I will see you next time with a new true crime video. Goodbye.